Welcome back. This is Yamachak Tries. Guess what? Horus. It's available for 1749 Canadian on Steam. It's uh, supposedly a British humor kind of eccentricities kind of game thing that's going to be happening. Not really sure what I'm expecting. <laughs> but. I like the soundtrack so far. Weird Lego, dude. <laughs> Horus Man 2.0. Solomon Solomon Automatons. Horseman two point oh. Okay. Weird mad scientist dude in the background. I am controlling this, if you can't tell. It's like the slightest downwards direction on the controller makes me face down. And so, I was born. The first people I remember seeing were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, the old man powered me down so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice or stupid personality. And the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. Although for some reason, Heather really didn't like me. Once I'd had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. Yeah, it's like the slightest downwards. Oh, so it's a Naruto run. Heck yeah, dude. Next, the old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump up them. But <laughs> I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them that I decided it might be okay. Let's do it, dude. We're going up above. We're going above. The old man then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Heather said the floors made it loud. <laughs> But when I smiled at her, she just frowned and looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell, but I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. <laughs> yeah, this game is cute. When I reached the other side, the old man just smiled and said, that'll do, for now. Begin, be bold, and venture to be wise. Quintus Horatius Flaccus. <laughs> Chapter 1, Learning to Walk. Alright. No, oh, the soundtrack is a banger, though. 
It's a very uh, narrative experience. I'm enjoying it, but it, it is uh, highly narrative. You don't like that kind of stuff. This and it's loud. A couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal, and I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the professor always called him Anton. For a while, he called me the yellow bastard. But the old man... Yo, that was some good lip syncing on that though. It sounded racist. Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in the post office robbery. Although it all went wrong for some reason. Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it terrifying. Then there was Alice. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger she had been a TV chef. Then, years later she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said, before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles. And something about a poo in a shoebox. I'm sure if you're British there's a lot of humor that, that I'm missing in this though. The old man gathered everyone together to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dick's job. <laughs> now, said the old man, we have company, pointing to some important looking people. Two large men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. He said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. Alright, let's do it. Wait, I wanna go this way. You can't make me go the way you want me to. Yoink! I am unstoppable! Everybody clapped. Except the important looking men. My lasers didn't work! Not exactly a cold calculated killer, is it? Said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? He asked. Move right, unless there's something in the way. <laughs> okay, okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher, but I'm sure you'll be fine. We're gonna move left now? Oh yeah, we are, dude. I can jump over that. Don't even, don't even think I can't, dude. What's over here? Nothing, just a bunch of boxes. How big is this dang house, man? Like, I tell ya, they got a billion, like, square feet of, of vertical space here. The Garys then rearranged the room one last time. <laughs> the, Garys. the old man smiled. Now, now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this Thank time, you. I was determined to do him proud. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Big jump. 
Big jump. Don't do it again. Little jump. Little jump. Little jump. Fall down. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom! The old man's friends actually seemed quite happy when I made it through. We might have a winner after all, said the man in black. It's no kill bot 3000, but you can almost see the fire. Are we like being a trained assassin or something? As a robot? Or being trained to be an assassin as a robot? You didn't just program me to be an assassin? My own room. She also wanted to play me some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything just pauses the, the entire cutscene, by the way. As if music wasn't amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. The slightest push I on any button. I what I saw. I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi. Anything anyone wanted to watch, I would happily watch with them. Then one sports. day, the old you watch man some sports ball. A small box. He plugged some cables into the television and said, "This is what I meant when I said video games." Dude, I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. I was unstoppable. I had enjoyed music, film, and television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form. It's Pong. <laughs> Table tennis for two. Okay. This game is weird. Legally distinct from Pong. Legally distinct. <gasps> I lost the health. I threw, man. How did the... I called BS on that one. He definitely hit it. Oh, you overshot it, man. Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera and arranged a day up by the sea so that Heather could take some photos, although I really don't think she wanted any pictures of me. When the old man asked the professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing. It could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, that's what you said about the Game Boy. Anton, how about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck. The last time I got in that car, Barry crashed us into a branch of Woolworths. I never would have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. The old man explained that the car was old and the brakes had failed, but Mr. I'm sorry, it's just... Any click of it, anything, even why, does it. I was expecting more gameplay out of this. <laughs> Let's be honest with you. It's really just purely narrative. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. Heather really doesn't like Horus, man. What's, what's Heather's problem? I'm sorry, I thought I could maybe do something. As the old man and I stood on the cliff tops, I could see something in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was. It's a so weird shipwreck, yeah. Man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. But he looked so sad when he spoke about war. Are we Mega Man or something? I didn't see what happened, but the metal platform Heather was climbing on had collapsed. She was safe, 
even if the rods she was on looked very dangerous. The tide was rising, and we didn't know how long the Coast Guard was This is what we were trained for, so dude. Had to climb down and get her. The old man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. I can do it, dude. Don't worry, I got Heather. Somehow or other, we're running, like, across the ocean to get to her, though. I don't, I don't know where she fell, why she was so dang far away, but... I have been waiting my whole life and her leg was broken. for this so moment. I her up as gently as I could. So I decided her up as gently as I could. I decided it would be oh, best no. if I didn't run the rest of the way. I can do it. Don't worry, Heather, you're safe. I got you, dear. What happens if we do die, though? I'm tempted to try it. And okay, we don't get enough. It arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay, and then took her off to hospital. A few days later, we all went to see how she was doing. I'm sorry. She was fine, but would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. She smiled! Heather likes us! Yo, this is a game changer. Mechanical man to the rescue. Hero. Robot. Hero bot. Yo, Heather and I were best friends now. We're besties. Inseparable. Too bad she dies. Once Heather got to know me, we became good friends. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. After a while, she became very interested in how I worked. Soon she knew as much about me as the old man did, if not more. Now we're climbing Mount Everest. A couple of months visiting other countries, as when it came to teaching me things, the old man always liked to pick interesting locations. Who is this old man? I'm sorry. He had explained the basics of mathematics to me at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. Yeah, why would you do that? These are just a bunch of rocks. Me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. This is why I was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber compared to the previous grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. Plus it was his favorite place to eat. We talked about life, the universe. Douglas Adams. Everything, really. When I asked him, why were we here? Why did we exist? He just smiled and said, life is like a game. Just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. So I asked him, what's my purpose? He thought for a bit, then said, so you want to be a real boy? Which just confused me even more. Eventually the old man said, For now, I want you to help clean things around the house. Are we going to learn how to sweep? I looked unimpressed. As he then said, Okay, I want you to clean one million things. It didn't sound like the meaning of life. But I suppose you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> We're actually going to end it here. Um, we're not going to continue on to chapter two or chapter whatever it is that we're on. The old man said yeah. He wanted to okay, I can't pause it here for some reason. Uh, okay. 
it, it's a highly narrative game. If we continue for 10 more minutes, it's going to be saying more narrative stuff. You know if you like it, you know if you don't. I like this. Not enough to play it. I, uh, I enjoy it, but um, I'd rather do other things with my time personally. But um, it was a fun game. It was a fun experience. It was funny. Uh, I feel like if I, I there were a few references that I just didn't get that would have been good to get. Uh, some humor that I wasn't able to pick up on. Unfortunately, it is uh, pretty well made for British people, I suppose. Um, but it was uh, it was enjoyable. Um, I thought there'd be more gameplay, but it is what it is. Anyway, this is available again for seventeen forty nine Canadian on Steam, probably fifteen dollars American. Um, if this seems interesting to you, if you want to continue seeing where this story goes, then go ahead and pick it up. But we're going to end it there. I, I feel bad about playing a purely narrative game like this on on YouTube and just sharing the whole experience. If you want to see where this goes, you're gonna have to you have to pick it up yourself. Um, but it's fun. It was a fun experience. I had a good time. I just I don't want to keep playing it because I, I feel bad. And uh, yeah, anyways, good to do it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it, subscribe to see more in the future, comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.